Hi, I'm Keith, and today I want to tell you about my Specialized Cirrus bike, which I just love. I'm going to tell you why I chose Specialized over uh, some other brand options, as well as give you a few important tips on buying your next bike. So let's get to it. So this is by far the best bike I've ever owned, and this is the Specialized Cirrus Sport. There's also the Cirrus Sport Disc and uh, various other models that are out and have come out uh, since I got this one. Um, I'm going to get into why I didn't go with the disc model, which has disc brakes in a moment. But um, basically, you know, I've owned um, road and mountain bikes before, and I really feel like this one beats them all in um, just total features and everything I need. It is a hybrid bike. And what that basically means is um, it's got a little stronger rim and just a slightly wider tire so if you want to take it in the dirt. And it also has the, um, you know, it's considered the sort of uh, crossover or motocross bar compared to, to a road bike. So that's the big difference. Um, it's still narrow enough tire that I feel it operates just like a road bike, uh, but it's, it's wide enough that it's okay in the dirt and, and, you know, trails that aren't too crazy. Let's just put it that way. So um, I want to get into um, just some of the features and reasons why I went with, uh, with Specialized. But um, one thing to note when you're looking at brands is, you know, when you're looking at bike brands, you're kind of looking mainly at the frame. And the reason I say that is because many of the other features on bikes are from after market or third party companies that just manufacture for everybody and most people know that but I just thought to point it out for example Shimano you know see the crank down here is Shimano and the shifters are Shimano and then the rims are usually made by a different company so um, before you get too carried away with brand just realize that on on most bikes the frame is the thing that is is most tied to the brand um, and then the rest are just parts so that are common on other bikes but that's still important we're going to get into why i chose specialized so um, let's look at just some of the features that i liked that made this the choice for me so um, the seat the stock seat is pretty comfortable um, which is not always the case with um, with bikes so that was a nice plus right away that i noticed about specialized um, the big one for me was shifters and brakes so um, this has um, really nice Shimano shifters and um, the brakes are comfortable and the V-brakes and we're going to talk about the lack of disc brakes in a minute but see this these shifters that show the you know show the the gear changing that was important to me I know not everybody cares about that but some of the other brands I tried didn't have that feature and same for um, you know same for the the larger gear up at the front by the crank so i like the fact that i could see what i was you know what i was doing um, the shifters on this bike have been absolutely fantastic i know that they're by shimano okay i know they're not the top of the line shimano but i will just have to tell you they may as well be okay they may as well be top of the line because they have been just fantastic this one is the shimano acera and i think the back one here it's a little hard to see, but I believe it's the um, Alivio. Starts with the letter A. Um, again, probably not Shimano's best shifters, but they have been fantastic. They just work like magic. They shift like butter, smooth. Um, I've got probably between 500 and 1,000 miles on this bike, and I have not really had to mess with the shifters except one time, and that was just me being kind of a wrench turning person that likes things being perfect. I think one time I had to make a slight little adjustment here uh, because the cables do stretch and it is normal for over time to do little tiny adjustments, but that's it. I've had other bikes where shifting was a problem from day one and uh, this is not the case. So again, really happy about that. So let's talk about brakes for a minute and why I decided to skip the disc brake option and go with the standard V-brake. Um, the first reason was cost. It was a considerable more amount of money. It was another couple hundred bucks to get into a bike um, with disc brakes in Specialized. And I just didn't see the benefit for me. 
And I'm not taking anything away from disc brakes. I know they're awesome and I know that the pros use them. And so if that works for you, then that's great. But um, I'm just telling you that the V brakes on this bike have been absolutely fantastic. Um, I have not needed to adjust them. You know, sometimes you get brakes and one side's a little cockeyed and one side's always closer. Never an issue, easy to adjust. To take the rim off, it's very easy. Like if you were to throw the bike in a car, it's a quick release thing right here, which I'm not gonna do right now. Um, but it's literally a, a five second thing and you pop it and um, the rim comes off to you know, transport the bike. But the money that I saved on disc brakes, I was able to get the carbon fork, the carbon fiber fork, which I highly recommend. Um, this, I noticed this right away when I rode the bike and test rode, how the carbon fiber just gives it a smoother, uh, just a more, I uh, explain it, just more of a, a smoother, stable ride, less, less bumpiness. And so um, I figured my money was, you know, better spent going into a carbon fiber fork. Um, the advantages, of course, of disc brakes is they are better um, in the rain, in wet environments. And um, I don't think you're going to overheat them like you would on in a very extreme hill situation. On this bike, I rode some of the, the longest, steepest hills in Orange County. And only one time when I was new on the bike did I overheat the brake a little bit and it got a little spongy. After that, I realized, okay, you can't ride the brake the whole way down on, the, on a, a mile long, super steep grade. And so unless you're, you're doing that a lot or you're in the rain, I think standard V-brakes are gonna work for me. So not taking anything away from disc brakes. So anyway, that's why I went with those. So just um, finalizing here, I just wanted to tell you why I chose Specialized over some other brands and then just leave you with a few tips for buying your next bike. So um, the bottom line with Specialized is I really felt like I was getting the best combination of everything from looks to uh, operation of brakes and shifters, uh, just overall feel of the bike, the carbon fork and the, the narrower tires. Let's get into the tire thing. I wanted the most narrow tire I could get for it to still be a, a hybrid bike. I just didn't want the wider, super wide tire. And I did see that with some other brands. Um, Giant in particular at the time I was looking, Giant Bikes had wider tires than I wanted in a hybrid bike. Uh, it just seemed more like a mountain bike to me. I know these look like road tires. Um, they are a little wider than road tires, so you can still take them in the dirt, and they're kind of worn down because I've got some miles on them. But I'm telling you, as long as you don't go into super insane deep sand or a lot of loose gravel, you'll be fine. I've taken this bike on many, many dirt trails, and um, I've been just fine up and down dirt hills, and some of them rather steep. I've also been fine. I've never fallen once, um, but I know my limits. So... Um, the big benefit of that narrow tire, of course, is on the road. This bike is going to just perform a million times better than a mountain bike. And again, that's why I went with the narrower tire and specialized because I just wasn't seeing it in other, other brands as much. Um, of course, you can in a road bike, but road bikes are more and you can't take them really in the dirt at all. And as I said, this for me has been the best of both worlds. So. Um, the other thing, um, just looking at some other brands, I felt like Trek was a little more money for what I was gonna get with this bike. Um, and then I already told you with Giant, um, I found like I was getting the narrower tires. One other important thing, um, the third sprocket down here is really important, at least for me. Uh, there are bike salesmen that will tell you you don't need it, but um, I've had mountain bikes and rode some of the most difficult hills you can imagine. And I'm telling you that this third sprocket here is a, is a lifesaver. And some bikes don't have them. And, they, and there's different, different sizes for them too. So, um, you know, you don't want a third sprocket that's almost as big as the second sprocket. I wanted the smaller one. It, I'm telling you, it just makes a big difference on hills. Unless you're Lance Armstrong or you're a triathlete, um, you may not need it. But there are some hills where I live that are so steep, they're even difficult to walk up. And so um, I, that was another thing that I wanted in a bike and a lot of bikes didn't have that. So again, 
I captured these features with Specialized. The last brand I looked at besides Giant and Trek was Fuji. And Fuji had some nice bikes too. They were inexpensive. They rode great. The reason I didn't go with Fuji is um, I just, in the area that I lived, I didn't see anybody riding Fuji. And so I didn't know why that was. Um, and so I thought, since this is a major purchase for me and I'm not gonna be getting another bike like this for years, I just decided to go with one of the big brands. And um, again, with everything that I've mentioned so far and specialized, that is why I went, I went with this company and I've been really, really happy so um, just in, oh, and then lastly, uh, I did like the fact that Specialized was uh, designed in California. So um, all those things together and all the features we talked about, that's why I went with Specialized over the other brands. Lastly, um, if I could just give you a few tips before you purchase your next bike, I would say, number one, get the absolute lightest bike you can afford. And if you're already an avid bike, you know, bike person and cyclist, you already know that. But I'm telling you, even a pound or two makes a big difference. I did everything from researching weights, and I don't have all that info right now in front of me. But I found that this, you know, especially this model with the carbon fork, it was a little bit lighter. And, you know, without the disc brakes, it made the difference for me. And really, with bike cycling, a pound or two of weight is, is a big difference. I know that sounds crazy, but if you don't believe me, try driving some of these bikes and riding them and test riding them. And you'll see the lighter bikes, they're just, they just perform effortlessly under your body, and especially on hills. And so that'd be my first tip, is get the lightest bike you can afford. And my second tip would, of course, be... Um, the third sprocket down here, which we already talked about, especially if you're in an area with hills. If you don't hit hills at all, then that doesn't matter. You'll be fine with two. The next major tip I cannot emphasize enough for a new bike purchase is tire width. So figure out how you're gonna use your bike. And if you're gonna be using it all on the road, then obviously narrow. If you're gonna be going in the dirt 10% of the time like me, the road rest of the time, consider going still with the most narrow tire you can get. Sure, you can get a wider tire and have a little more comfort in the dirt, but I'm telling you, on the road, there is nothing like having this narrow road bike tire, even though it's a hybrid tire. The bike is fast. Uh, I routinely can pass people with no effort that are on mountain bikes and bikes with wider tires because if you do a little research, you'll find that the efficiency of the bike, how fast it goes, how, how what's called rolling resistance, everything is down to the narrowness of this tire and, and weight. And so a wider tire means usually a wider rim. It means more mass, it means more weight. Um, and so for these reasons, um, I, I went with the narrowest tire I could get and I did really just fine in the dirt and still do, and I haven't fallen. And I would just recommend that highly as part of my, my closing tips here. Um, and the last thing I would tell you is get a professional opinion on size of bike for your body, okay? For your body height and male or female. Um, get a professional opinion from a bike st store, don't guess. Because there's been times when I purchased bikes and I took a guess at what the frame height was gonna be and um, there was times when I was uncomfortable with that bike purchase. So a lot of bikes come in different measurements, um, small, medium, large, and get a professional opinion because this bike really fits me well and it's just been great. So um, anyway, guys, those are my, my, my breakdown on the bike. I hope you don't mind the details. The reason I did go into a little detail here is I just see a lot of bike reviews where people are just saying, hey, this is a great bike. I'm on my, you know, 1,000 mile run or whatever, 1,050 miles, and it's just still a bike, great bike, but they're not, not going into, into why it's great. So I hope you don't mind a little longer video and just some details um, about the bike and what's been great for me. So if you have any questions, I'd do my best to answer. Um, pop them, drop them below, and uh, if you would, pop us a like and uh, subscribe if you found this helpful. And uh, again, any questions, let me know. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks, man. See you next time.